This episode, we are live and remote from the road as we try to determine through a World Cup style tournament who is the most annoying person on the internet. And what happens, Mr. Justin Robert Young? Egos clash, juice bag behavior is unleashed, and we finally crown a champion of the most annoying person on the Twitters. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 29 for June 22nd, 2010. The most annoying person in the World Cup. This episode of NSFW brought to you by Carbonite. Backing up the files on your PC or Mac is safe and easy with Carbonite. For a free trial plus two free months with purchase, go to Carbonite.com, offer code NSFW. This is it, it is go time, it is NSFW, the next soccer for the world. We need some football winners. I am your host, Brian Brushwood, joined as always by my inimitable co-host, Mr. J.R.Y. Justin Robert Youngification, the first clearly holding a, a pepper dolphin. <laughs> what is going on, J.R.Y.? I was sent a fapper by Tony Wang and, and, and the team at Twit. I'm, I'm in love with this thing. I'm doing fantastic, Brian. We're going to have a momentous episode, something that will go down in the history of the internet, where once every four years, the world's most annoying people are decided that the weed is separated from the chaff, and we will get a winner here tonight on an NSFW show. We'll, we'll get Lord of the Chaff is what it is. We got to get rid of all the wheat. We got to yep. kick all that chaff, but we got to find the chaffiest of the chaff. And that's why we are joined by Mr. Chaff himself, none other than Tomas Marie, Tom Merritt. How are you doing? The Dick Clark of internet podcasting, Tom Merritt. Well, I'm doing fine, Brian. <laughs> oh, wait, we haven't started that part yet. Uh, I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. How's things going way, with you? It should be noticed by everybody listening and watching that you rushed home from the Twit Cottage in order to join us to make this happen. And you actually don't, do you even know what we're up to for this episode? Can you set this up for us? Um, yes, yeah, so this is the episode where we are um, writing a progressive comic book, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, all the characters have a hidden agenda and it's going to be long and laborious and difficult to get and through. Like, so I, let's get started with I panel draw, one. I draw a bit, and then I hand it to Justin, and then he draws the next bit, and then, yeah. He, right? he, draw, he draws a wiener exactly. on it, and then yeah. goes and on then, to the next And then, you guy. know, somebody's gay, and somebody killed the gay guy's sister, but it's not the same person. Spoiler alert. And it turns Sorry. out that it, when they said he was gay, he just meant happy because he's totally anachronistic. <laughs> all right, look, let's get let's get to the meat of this. First of all, we do have to check in with our status report with Melissa. First of all, Operation Success on Make Melissa Day Phase 1. She is now the proud new owner of a 64-gigabyte iPod Touch. That alone deserves a digital round of applause. Second of and all, uh, we do have to go on to the next phase, and we still need to bug Lady Gaga and the Ellen Show until we get here on there. But that's not what we're doing today. What are we doing today? Whoa. Justin. Yes! Uh, all right, Brian, What uh, we, we've been inspired by the World Cup, which is going on currently in South Africa. And so we have searched out, as it turns out, and we didn't know this before we actually put in the research, but there is another tournament, one that gathers every four years, which is odd because I don't know if Twitter's been around that long, but it <laughs> finds the most annoying people on Twitter. Uh, we are now past the group phase of competition. We are into the knockout round. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the World Cup of Twitter annoyance is being broadcast to you tonight on NSFW Show, and let's throw live to that coverage. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Internet World Cup of Douchebags on the Internet. I'm Brian Brushwood, joined as always by the inimitable co-host, Mr. Justin Robert Young. Justin, how are you, J-R-Y? We're ready for a cracking Dolly Brook here as the world's worst in terms of douchiness match wits. Douche wits will be smashed, a winner will be crowned, and finally, a champion of annoyance will be canonized for the world to recognize. 
also chiming in will be none other than Thomas Merritt of Tomas Merit Incorporated. Tomas Merit, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, Brian, and it's just amazing to be a part of this coverage of the one and only World Cup. That's right, three hosts, one cup here on our douchebag <laughs> coverage. <laughs> with that in mind, I think it's important that we reveal our initial eight contenders. Shall we start with the first face-off, Justin Robert Young? Indeed, if we can please switch over to the big board, our first matchup is going to match uh, Kevin Smith, director, and Roger Ebert, the uh, critic who now currently is uh, a, a blogger and uh, tweeter extraordinaire. Uh, he, they are joined in their bracket by The Situation from the Jersey Shore and Jason Calacanis, he of Mahalo.com. Chad Ochocinco, wide receiver for the Cincinnati Bengals, as well as Dancing with the Stars contestant, will match with the youngest contestant in this competition, OMG Chad, also Chad Johnson. And finally, we have Sarah Palin, former vice presidential nominee, with Big Ben, the clock based in London. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Uh, first of all, and I'm switching to being the American announcer on this part. Justin, what is the what is the rules for this? We're going to face them off face to face. Now, the problem is everyone has preconceived notions, whether they like Kevin Smith, whether they dislike Kevin Smith. And uh, we've got to purge against that. There has to be some kind of double blinding so that we can evaluate the last three tweets from each of the competitors and have the chat room decide which one is more annoying. Indeed, Brian. That's why we are going to go through each round where uh, both you, Brian, and our guest, Tom Merritt, will read one of the tweets in a completely a non-specific accent so you will not know which account it has come from. I will be determining whether or not it is a goal for one side or the other. The best out of the three rounds will advance to the next. Fully, uh, fully one half of all the messages in the chat room are predictions about how this is going to turn out. The other half are people doing Vuvuzela impressions. <laughs> Just going... <laughs> They're saying, Voo this man! Okay, so let's get... <laughs> let's get started with the first face off. Who are we facing down first? Uh, Brian, uh, you are going to have to find some way to communicate. Or actually, you know, uh, 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 how are we going to make sure who gets whose account? We need to have some on-the-fly communication. Uh, look, all right, here's the deal. First face-off is going to be Kevin Smith versus Roger Ebert. So both of us are going to open their Twitter feeds, and then we're each going to look at the last three. And we're going to alternate. We're going to pick this. We'll be given a an accent, and both competitors, Thomas and me, have to read it in that accent, uh, uh, one, two, and three, okay? And then the chat room will decide which one was more annoying based on the quality of their Twitter, not upon the preconceived notions about who they think it may or may not be. Does that make sense, Thomas? I believe that does make sense, Brian. <laughs> uh, if I, as long as I know what the Twitter accounts are, if you read one, I'll obviously know to read the other. Okay, well, our first face-off is between Kevin Smith and Roger Ebert. So I'm going to open up a couple of these, and I tell All you right. what, as, I... As, as, as Brian prepares, uh, the competitors have taken the pitch, and now we are preparing for the opening whistle to this contest, the beginning of the elimination stage for the World Cup of Twitter. All right, Justin, so to keep our palates cleansed, what accent shall we both read in? Brian, uh, as per official rules, you are going to read in the style of a Confederate soldier who's just found a time machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a <laughs> Confederate soldier. <clears throat> now, a classic, is this, is, Justin, is, a classic. <laughs> really, we a... have to begin with something familiar to all the audience, the world round. <laughs> and so Confederate soldier who's found a time machine which runs on sparks. Okay, so so do like is this as, as if I'm writing it in a letter or or me live in person? Person. Uh, Brian, improvisation skills, of course, key to these competitions. 
Uh, I will say you are riding it to your love back home. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Perhaps only good Dr. Boardwell could make the Society for Cognitive Studies of the Moving Image so fascinating. Your really witness? Dis really disappointing strike there <laughs> by contestant number one. We again go to Tomas Marie. <laughs> Oh, hi, Madison. I can have sold out Smod, 7 p.m. show, 204 slash 300 sold, tiny URL, 10 p.m., 114 slash 300. Oh, God, okay, oh good. a full plug, a cracking strike of douchiness as Tomas Marit goes up 1-0. All right, all right, I got this one. I got this one. <clears throat> After all these years. People still all get worked up about the Star Wars movies. Was Lucas wrong to challenge one frame? HTTP colon slash slash J dash MP slash A G O D O A. Certainly contrary to popular opinion, but again, stopped well short of the goal line. Tomas Marit can seal the deal with this strike. From now on, if someone calls me talented, they get throat punched for lying. For this is true talent. Bitly link. Hashtag. <laughs> okay, Lego right. printer. Plugging somebody else's work. Certainly selfish. Not douchey enough to lock this one down. Please. Again we go to Brian Brushwood. All right. <clears throat> the Wild Hunt. Men will be man. The Thursday opener for the Chicago Underground Film Festival at the Siskel. My review. Link. A blatant plug, and that ties the game in stoppage time. <laughs> All right. I think people are and able to figure out. And if I may, out. Justin, a lovely use of the former co-host Siskel in the tweet itself. <laughs> certainly cloying, certainly self-reverential, and certainly a play for the heartstrings when none is needed. We are now tied up with a chance again to end the game. Tomas Marit. Via be accident. Loved your latest blog post in quote. The Carnegie Versary photo has palpable power. It can heal a leper. SilentBobSpeaks.com <laughs> An over-the-top plug for an event that happened well over a year ago. That is the game. Oh, my goodness. Just like that. So we already have a winner then, right? That's what just happened? Yes, that is an advancement. Of course, we already know, as if you have not pieced this together, Kevin Smith advances over Roger Ebert. All right, Kevin Smith goes on. Roger Ebert completely eliminated. K Smith, FT Dubs, we're moving right on to round number two. Who we got? Uh, of course, Mike Sorrentino. The situation of MTV's Jersey Shore has parlayed what is 15 minutes of fame into several thousand Twitter followers. He matches up against a tech entrepreneur as well as a world-class douchebag who got pwned by Doyle Brunson playing poker, despite the fact that that's all he ever frigging talks about on tech podcasts. Jason Calacanis of Mahalo.com. Uh, now, Justin, he's up. Uh, this is a bit of a surprise, this Jason Calacanis entry. Uh, many people thought that he was a valuable contributor. Why suddenly is he on this list of annoying people on Twitter? Well, really, Brian, all you do is have to look at the history. For every time that he tweets a link that maybe explains a meme, he's also linking to his own Mahalo.com. He gives away things every three days so he can boost his followers shamelessly. And, of course, the iPad debacle where he lied blatantly to everybody and then mocked those that dared to take him seriously, treading on his own credibility with the grace of an elephant with cerebral palsy. <laughs> well, uh, that is quite a pedigree. So I say we get this thing started. How shall the two be read, sir? Uh, I, I, I ask you, Brian, should maybe uh, you call this one and me and Tomas go back and forth or some other combination? Quite right. Quite right. After the abysmal performance of one Brian Brushwood going into the round, round one, being replaced by the co-host, 
Justin Robert Young. Justin Robert Young, well known for his superior accents and sharper wit. So we go with our first. We go and to as he Robert comes on to the field, immediately the referee hands Justin Young a red card just for being him. <laughs> And with that, it is time to begin our face-off. Again, you know the rules. Find your Twitter uh, pages, pick out yes. the first three pages, and our first contestant will be Justin, reading in the voice of a newsreel reporter who recently discovered he was gay. And go. <laughs> Great startups on deck for Open Angel Forum on Thursday night. Totally stoked. Good Angels, too. Kobe Burgers plus money plus startups equals win. <laughs> uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to uh, uh, give you a yellow card on that one, as you clearly were doing the same accent <laughs> that you've been doing the rest of the show. <laughs> you, that wasn't... All right, next one, next one. Let's go to Tomas Moritz. Tomas Moritz, the same voice. Keep in mind, we're talking about the Newsies. First TV, now music. Situation is taken over. Bitly Link. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a clear winner. Out the gates. It's 1-0 in favor of Tomas Moritz and what appears to be that's a thinly veiled situation. Back to JRY, Justin Robert Young, already dragging behind, getting crushed by Tomas Marit. Can he bring it back? Give us the newsies. TI makes a big bid for hobby market. Hack a day, dig link. <laughs> Again, with the signature limp wrist, interesting that he plays on the stereotypes. Excellent execution of the newsy voice, however. Back to Tomas Marit for round two. 20K followers, that's the situation. <laughs> <laughs> and a signature move of Tomas Marit, the ability to improvise on the fly, to grow in front of the camera itself. Once again, Tomas Marit, excellent, flawless execution. However, in the interest of keeping suspense alive, we withhold <laughs> any points. Finally, for the last round, JRY. Hey, boys! Tesla <laughs> outbinds more models, including a cabriolet, Autopia, and Wire.com. <laughs> oh, with an incredible <laughs> move from nowhere. A goal is clearly scored by Justin, but the question is, can Tomas find, find the equalizer? Tomas Maritz. <laughs> New York's snowstorm today is officially a situation. Anyone snowed in yet? Oh, no. Out of bounds with the over-the-top possible <laughs> voice. And the crowd really <laughs> reacting poorly to that call on the field. 2K, says the ref. I'm afraid we'll have to go to a face-off. This, this round will be decided by a kickoff between the two. With one final tweet, we go to JRY. Are you excited to see George Lucas' remake of all the Star Wars movies using his Avatar oh, 3D a red technology? Card the gate, not even being allowed to finish. Red card, the moment he got started, JRY has been eliminated. All my friends, he goes to Tomas Marit, which means that uh, uh, the situation advances over Jason Callahan. Uh, uh, wait, Jason Calacan has got eliminated, which means T situation goes on. All right, who's up next? You, you know, I really hate to say that this uh, game was not planned out so thoroughly in advance to call into question the organizers, but it really strikes me that we should just admit who we're reading since we're fooling nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid. Just, just it would in that, not that in the that interest. Away a bit of the thinly veiled suspense that there hardly is any left. <laughs> Why bother?
<laughs> I'm afraid we've got a good keep point. Going. A good point by a man who's beyond <laughs> reproach. Uh, we move on to our third category, our third matchup. Uh, 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 Tomas, if you will do the officiating, and me and Brian will match wits. Excellent, Justin. Not a problem at all. Just tell me which match is coming up next. <laughs> Oh, uh, no problem, be... sir. No problem. It is Chad Ocho Cinco, Cincinnati Bengals wide receiver I... versus OMG, OMG Chad. Chad. Quite right. Excellent. Quite right. A battle of Chads not seen since the Civil War in the nation of Chad will now <laughs> take place on the pitch. And we're going to ask that this be read in the voice of a female Nazi opera singer. Circa 1939. I'm sorry. Did you say a female Nazi? Uh, what? Opera singer. Okay, a female yes, that's Nazi right. opera singer. A female Nazi opera singer. And we'll start. Of with course, Brian specifically Brushwood. from the year 1939. 1939. Right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um. <clears throat> wow. This is so. I assume she's not on stage, and uh, she is. Um, just happens to be Nazi. A lot of no, equivocating from Brian on the pitch as the crowd grows uh, restless with Vuvuzelas. Okay. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> oh, God. Wow, this is tough. Uh, <clears throat> I'm... <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> I'm lurking. Got my mind right. I'm focused. Getting it done so many ways. Focus tweets. And wide of the mark, as the ball <laughs> moves over to Justin Robert Young, the crowd remains sadly silent. <laughs> to the people who are using steam, my username is OMG Chad. Add me, please. <laughs> Oh my God. For a moment, it looked as if it would bounce away, but then deflected into the goal for a point. <laughs> An unexpected head for Justin. And we move back oh to Brian God. Brushwood. Wow. <coughs> I got to work on my falsetto here. <clears throat> All right, ready? Here we go. Great. <laughs> Call to question you need answered. Send it through the Ocho Cinco app. Go get it and enjoy. Billy Link. While the accent got better, it was the douchiness of the post that pushed this one over the line and into a score, bringing us to a 1 1 tie. Hey! All right, it's back you, to Justin. you, Justin. Screw you, Helen. Just come down. A personal post, somewhat annoying, not as annoying as the voice it was read in, but just misses. Side of the side, we remain 1 0. Or 1 1. Okay, ready? Ach, Gotten Himmel. If you are bored at work, go to my videos on my Ocho Cinco app and watch them. Read and enjoy, Billy Link. A personal plug, read well, and it looks like we could be headed to a Brushwood victory, depending on what happens with Young here. Let's see what he has in store. Had dinner with Lee. Apart. And guess who's eating next to us? Ryan Seacrest! Oh, oh, man, that's, when, that's when he tweeted out that he, he totally stars. He saw Ryan Seacrest sitting next to us when we were a out to eat with, with Leo. Threat there. We've got two name droppings and a twit pick. Nothing more annoying. And it brings us to a 2-2 tie. Time for a shootout. Okay. So who, who Happy first? Happy to you, Okay, yes. got it. <clears throat> Over to Schwood. <clears throat> <clears throat> mein Führer, 
Also check out <laughs> facebook.com slash Ocho Cinco. Almost at 300,000 strong. Wow. A name, a, a, a personal plug and a number called Nothing Gets Douchier. Another score for apparently Ocho Cinco. Justin <laughs> holding on by a thread. And all our viewers are gone. <laughs> it was just wide of the mark. Puppet fisting, not that douchey. And it looks like we have a win. Oh, so Cinco. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> all right, going back to the board. We should make yeah. it clear in this case that it's the douchiness of the post that definitely brought the winner over the line. You know, uh, Which, Tom, say, you really Austin. cannot discount the fact that although OMG Chad scored a cracking victory out of the knockout round over Justin Bieber, that his inexperience really hurt him. There are decades of douchiness that Chad Ochocinco has on him, and that really showed by the end. And we His are back. relentless self-plugging is something that you just have to have a lot of maturity to out-douche. <laughs> and we are back for our final round of the elimination initial round. I'm Brian Brushwood, and our face-off continues. It is Sarah Palin, reviled by the Democrats, hailed by the Tea Party, facing off against East of the Pond, on the other side of the Atlantic, the unifying force that brings all Britain together. It is, of course, Big Ben's clock. The two of them will be facing off, represented by none other than Tomas Marit and J.R.Y., and they will be uh, no, reading. sir, sorry, uh, we are getting a lineup change here as the rotation dictates. Brian Brushwood will be on the pitch representing one of the two. Damn. I will be officiating the match. Damn. Here we go as they both have their sheets open right now. We begin with Tomas Marit, who will be reading in the style of an archer who's just struck a goose in Denmark. <laughs> Mind you, he lives in Greensboro, North Carolina. He's found out that the goose was struck over Skype. <laughs> bong, bong, bong. A little Swedish, which will push it well left of the mark. Well struck with the histrionics, specifically the um, flourishes, no matter. We move across to Brian Brushwood, who has oh. either Sarah Palin or Big Ben, really <laughs> too close to tell at this point. <clears throat> Ready. So I, I just hit a bird from, from Denmark, in Denmark from... Well Car over Carolina. the ocean. Who knows? Right. Quantum mechanics, possibly. Right, got it. Oh! Rahm Emanuel, as shallow, narrow-minded, political, irresponsible as they come to falsely claim Martin's BP comment as GOP philosophy. Rob, you lie! <laughs> Exasperated and well-struck. The, the crowd really responding to that one with a vuvuzela as Brian moves one ahead with either Sarah Palin or Big Ben again. Really, we cannot tell at this point who is who. We move again across the pitch to Tomas Marit. Bong! Bong! And that'll be it again. Really not showing up whatsoever is uh, Tomas Marit, uh, either Sarah Palin or Big Ben. Again, very monosyllabic, not really douchey. All that much at all. We go again to Brian Brushwood. <coughs> Happy Father's Day, Todd, Chuck, Jim, Bob. Thanks for working so hard, loving unconditionally, and supporting always. We're baking you a cake, Smiley. And that one sure ended up in the back of the net. But wait, offsides is the call on the pitch that will not count to go up 2-0. Tomas Marit is still in this. Uh, real quick, 
Please, Tomas. <laughs> <laughs> really nothing doing again just an absolute piss poor performance by whomever whether it be big ben or sarah palin uh a disgrace as sarah as uh, either big ben or sarah palin as represented by brian brushwood will be our winner to secure the final spot in the quarterfinals of this the world cup of twitter douchiness <laughs> Uh, chat room actually wanted to call a foul. Apparently, there was a miscommunication from the chat room. The following tweet came in. Uh, why are they both reading Sarah Palin? <laughs> <laughs> See what we did there? Zing. Okay, uh, look, that's it. We got our advancement going back to the big board. I need to find my marker. Sarah Palin advances Big Ben clock eliminated S. Palin. But before we go on to the final round, you know what we got to do. Yes, Brian, as we uh, bring this, which will surely either be the best show we've ever done or the worst thing ever on any of our resumes, we will recognize that Carbonite.com is the fine sponsor of this edition of NSFW and the World Cup of Twitter douchiness as a whole. Uh, now, just in case, you know, on the off chance that they actually wrote in the contracts with Quit Twit, they might have said, uh, seriously, read this copy and don't do it in a funny accent. So with that in mind, I'm going to put pause on the hilarious, terrible, terrible accents and take a, a moment well to talk about struck Carbonite. common sense decision by Brian Brushwood. Okay, but you realize you have to participate as well, Justin, so you can't keep doing the accent as well. But no, seriously. Of course, of course, Brian. So here's the thing about Carbonite. If you don't know, Carbonite is the easiest way to back up every single thing on your hard drive. Every type of file, you can back it all up. Now, here's a lot of people I know for years Every couple of years, I would buy an external hard drive and I'd copy everything over and I was pretty sure I was fine. And then one day it hit me that I was like, oh, well, maybe, uh, you know, my house burns down and then I lose everything. And people don't realize they've got their family pictures, baby's first steps. They've got all of their term papers for school. Everything that matters to you is all inside one hard drive. And if it was, was to burn down, you'd be screwed. Or worse yet, if somebody were to steal your computer, there's no way. And on top of that, the hard drive could go bad. I thought I was being smart by saying, oh, I'll get a little one terabyte drive and I'll put it in my backpack. And then I realized one day, it's like, wow, now I've got all this sensitive data that I'm walking around in a backpack that could easily be completely stolen and everyone's got my sensitive data, right? So the only way to do it, it's <clears throat> safe, it's secure, it's offsite, and the best of all, it's automatic, is go to Carbonite.com. What do you say about that, Justin? All right, listen, Brian, it's no secret that... Um spirits like to haunt hard drives so you might have had somebody at some point die in your house a pet you might be built on an indian burial ground family member uh you know even if you keep it in a separate hard drive they're gonna haunt that too and they're gonna start deleting personal files spreadsheets naughty pictures of the misses here's what you got to do send that stuff over wires to carbonite usa get it all backed up it's the best thing that's ever happened to you. And, and you can go ahead and get, uh, what, two months free. Right, Brian? They've been generous enough. Uh, yeah, you do get two free months with purchase, but you get a free trial right off the bat. So you get your hands on. You get to try it out. You get to see how good it works for you. Then when you buy it, you get two months free. After that, $55 a year, less than the cost of a single Xbox game. And you are safe and secure knowing that unlimited backups are available at Carbonite.com. Now, here's the thing, though. How do they track whether or not it's worth it for them to spend money to keep Leo Laporte in business, to keep the Twit Cottage gilded in gold, as we all know it is? And the only way they know is if people use the coupon code. And not only do you get a discount, but it keeps us in business. So use the offer code TWIT when you sign up at Carbonite.com. Anything else we need to know? Oh, there's no there's no credit card needed either, either for the free trial. Go right now, try it out, no, see how the no, software works. No, credit cards are for idiots, as we all know. Don't let the man track you with the credit <laughs> card information. Uh, head on over to Carbonite, use the offer code NSFW. And please, nope. folks, don't be another victim of poltergeist eliminating your personal files. Protect yourself with Carbonite, where evil spirits fear to tread. Oh, this is great. So we actually do have our own offer code? Uh, because I was saying twit because that's what it said on, on the document I was said. If we have our no. own offer code, 
No, if, if, you, if you look on the Skype window as people okay, are reading. Well, some of us are too busy hosting the show to be watching the show at the same time. Uh, I mean, good for you that you got so much free time, right? But the important thing is, seriously, use the uh, use the offer code NSFW because they track these results. They know whose programs are bringing in the people. Uh, but uh, dude, seriously, Carbonite, don't be an idiot. Don't be a jackass. I'm pretty sure that's their slogan. Don't be a dumbass. Use Carbonite. Justin? As we return to the pitch. <laughs> We have again the quarterfinals. Uh, Brian, uh, I, my, my rule book is not handy to me. I will ask you, uh, do we match up one-on-one -on -one or should we maybe in a very cracking dramatic fashion uh, have one red for all four and uh, name a winner right now? Despite your obvious bias for the cracking formation, I'm afraid the rule book is perfectly clear. One-on-one -on -one elimination is the rule of the day. We begin with K. Smith versus T situation in an epic face-off of two gentlemen of the province of Jersey. Representing both of those uh, uh, pl people, place, ah, I was doing so good until then. It's, it's Justin Robert Young and Tomas Marit. The two of them will be reading from each of their tweet books. Feel free to select three of your favorites in our playoff. We begin with Justin Robert Young, who will be portraying a very, very angry six-year-old hobbit. Justin. Before you go to Comic-Con, come to Los Angeles and hit up Telecom, Link and Link. <laughs> An angry, angry hobbit indeed. Unconvincing on the age, over the top, screeching, unpleasant to the ears. Will this win him the day we go to Tomas Moritz? Don't tell Guidos how to use Brodzer and stop hating on Snickers. <laughs> Indeed, I veritably felt the hair upon the feet of that little lass. One point goes straight to Tomas Marit. We go back to the while the Vuvuzelas serenade the day. Next in the Galactic Bounty Hunter says, He's no good to me, Dad. Ask, he any good as soap? <laughs> Hilarious faces do not cover for the poor impression. It sounds more like an elderly witch on a hunt of her own. We go back to Tomas Marie. Crowd clearly didn't like that call. <laughs> I think they clearly didn't like your impression. Go on. Public service announcement. Ronnie is what happens when you come off juice. Again, a smashing goal. Straight to the heart of the pitch. It is none other than Tomas Marie with another victory. This is Justin's only last chance to save the day. We go to Justin for one more read. Green Hornet sets and stars Wednesday. Cover image didn't happen. <laughs> Cover image induced boners for sure. Link! <laughs> and bone maneuver from Justin Robert Young. Running down the wrong side of the field somehow has allowed him to take the day. A salvation point. He goes. I believe that may have been a 30-year-old orc, Brian, rather than a six-year-old hobbit. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, quite entertaining, if not victorious. No, I was going to you to save the... Uh, oh, my goodness. Tomas Marie did not even bother to read the last tweet. We have a winner by default. Justin Robert Young advances Tomas Marie in the greatest upset, the greatest error in the history of the douchebag Twitter World Cup fails to advance, which means Kate Smith advances over the situation on the big board. And I'm marking out the situation. K. Smith advances to the finals. Where, where do we go from here, Justin? Uh, it is going to be you and Tomas Marit with uh, the West Bracket. All right. That will be uh, Sarah Palin versus Chad Ochocinco. Please, man at the ready. You will be reading this in the voice of Winston Churchill, who's just <laughs> tried absinthe for the first time. Wait, wait, Winston Churchill did what? 
who's just tried absinthe for the first time. <laughs> tried absinthe for the first time. Right, of course, got it. And who's going first? Uh, that will be you, Brian Brushwood. <clears throat> right, okay, here we go, here we go. <clears throat> <laughs> nah, I'm in Miami. I wasn't planning on coming to the A until it was time to smash the Falcons. But I'll come a little early. A man who's clearly never heard Winston Churchill speak a word in his life <laughs> fails to strike true. We go to Tomas Marit. Oh, disaster needs divine intervention. As man's efforts have been futile, golf lawmakers designate today their prayer for solution slash miracle. <laughs> a crowd of Vuvuzela blowing fans know not whether they're in a tube station in 1943 with the air raid sirens blaring as that was a cracking impression of Winston Churchill trying absent for the first time. We have a 1-0 lead for Tomas Marit again. Brian Brushwood. I'm ready to take it, and the good news is now I've heard an impression of that, so I can do an impression <laughs> of impression. Here we go. All right. <clears throat> Bro, from the Rolex parking lot to the top, I see you grinding and climbing. I'm supporting every chance I get. Pound one love. Pound 305. Some really shameless local reverential tweets that ties it up at 1-1. One, one, Tomas Marit, your move. Tim Scott for South Carolina's first district Facebook link. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Truly one of the greatest performances we've ever seen in this, the World Cup of Twitter douchebags. 2-1, the lead, Brian, for his own survival, has to strike this one true. Indeed. I'm feeling like going to King of Diamonds or Diamonds Cabaret to finish off this relaxing day. Just use my eyes and look at Pound eye candy. Unfortunately, George Burns does not count as Winston oh, Churchill trying absent. And we have a winner! Oh, in Tom Oswald and Sarah Palin. Back to the big board. Ocho Cinco eliminated our big face off as we go to the end. The most annoying person on Twitter. It's Sarah Palin versus Kevin Smith. I tremble to wonder how this is going to turn out. Who's going to officiate? I think it's a, I think it's Tomas Marit's turn, right? It's Tomas Marit's turn as Brian Brushwood seeks to recover from his good night Gracie moment, which has already swept through the papers of his hometown, disgracing his voice, talent, abilities. <laughs> And that's right, two heavyweights facing off in the final here. Kevin Smith, he's taken up more airline seats than most frequent flyers, and that's just on one <laughs> flight. We also have Sarah Palin, who is often thought of as unintelligent, but really is just vapid. And so we begin with Brian Brushwood reading one of those uh, Twitter personalities in the voice of of a Canadian hockey player who hopes to someday be a Shakespearean actor. <laughs> Boy, uh, I gotta find a tweet, eh? Uh, <clears throat> hmm. As oh, he begins wait. to take the uh, to take the field, practicing with the accent, walk it out, sir. Make sure it fits you well before he gets into action. This is the championship. You have to be careful. It's as I bus across America, I, pay, I pass many a BP station dotting the landscape. All I can think is, it must suck to be a clerk there right now, eh? Oh, and...
and a swipe at BP oil and clerks from a man who made a movie called Clerks. Clearly a goal winner in douchery. Over to Justin Robert Young. Driving beautiful states, fueling America's heart, melting folks along the way, hit Canada's yes for drive home, reading Mark Stein's article now. An excellent accent and dripping with sentimentality that meant absolutely nothing, clearly scoring a douchey goal there as well. We go 1-1 back to Brian Brushwood. <sighs> I get so much <laughs> plentiful put on <laughs> Ask a Lord, granted. It's all with the same chick. What is cool? She helps me like I'm the cure for fat. And a dead center goal as someone who's probably not hugged his mother in years claiming to get that much. <laughs> it's nothing but douchery in that Twitter post. 2-1 over to Justin. <laughs> Chat room, chat room is shouting. They're like, stop, Brian. You're ahead. We don't want him to win. <laughs> and Mr. President, 50 days later, still no desire to speak with BP CEO. Reference Americans so adversely impacted. Kicking ass or just talking. It'll help. <laughs> A fairly low-level political attack that goes wide of the goal. Uh, rather uh, irritating than annoying, and it's 2-1. Can Brian Brushwood square it away for the opponent, Brian? <clears throat> I have one. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> <laughs> Please stop sending me the frog face effing chimp clip. <sighs> it's giving me a a B word that won't quit. Someone will get a will get coordinate. I can't I can't read the guys. This is too this is too dirty. I I I'm I can't I can't read this one. Too dirty Who to even be man? read. I can't get make the penalty shot. And uh, so we default a two one lead over to Justin Robert Young. Can he even it up? Helen, Helen, Helen. Unimaginable misunderstanding of Jewish history, eh? An unconsciousable indecency. Press Corps colleagues calling you on this? <laughs> Bitch. Almost, a, uh, almost an in uh, intelligible sentence there. And if you didn't know any better, could have had a point. Not douchey at all. The win goes to Brian Brushwood and oh, Kevin oh. Smith. Oh, come on. I tried to... Oh, now I'm the biggest douche on Twitter. Oh, I can't believe I facilitated this. And just like that, a tragedy in sports history. Kevin Smith, against his own good graces, elevated to the lowly, lowly position of most annoying man on Twitter. I go to you, Tomas Marit, for opinions. Well, this was not expected at all, Brian. Uh, most folks thought Sarah Palin was a shoe-in here. Unfortunately, her level of douchery has fallen off uh, over the past few tweets. Kevin Smith uh, should have probably been taken out by Chad Ochocinco. I think that is the person who performed the best in this tournament. But as you know, it's what happens on the pitch that counts. And so, much like Germany or France before them, when Brazil should have won in soccer, we have Kevin Smith you said taking soccer. the title. Instead of football. Uh, look, dude, uh, I'm not going to lie. This is a travesty of sportsmanship. Uh, it is with uh, a heavy heart that I feel like I have failed in my efforts for Kevin Smith. Uh, it is, it is truly a, a, an own goal that will cost them and go down in history as something that uh, may be in the same league of 1994, Andres Escobar's Columbia goal, which got him shot. I would not be shocked to see a similar fate before Brian Brushwood for damning his hero, Kevin Smith.
Did you just tell the fans to freaking shoot me? Is that really uh, what just happened? Nobody said anything of the sort, Brian, but really, who would be shocked if Brian Brushwood's corpse was found riddled with bullets in the Bogota streets? See, this is, oh, you're killing me, dude. All right, look, let's wrap things up here. We've got something very important Certainly that we need to start Certainly nobody doing. should at reply that Kevin Smith by saying that Brian Brushwood has doomed him to the title of douchiest Twitter. No, 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 that no, no, no. no. That should not happen. Nobody should do that. I tried to throw the game. And, I tried and, to throw and the game. while they're at it, they should not point to the recorded footage of him admitting that he's never seen mole rats. No, 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 I didn't. Oh, come on, you're killing me. This is, look, I love Kevin Smith. I love Smodcast. I love his movies. I threw, I tried to throw the game. Not enough to watch one of his classics, mole rats, nor to give him enough of a performance to keep I him from in my hands so that I can watch Twitter it. Title. A World Cup winner by Brian Brushwood, damning Kevin Smith for all time. And that that's all from NSFW here at the World Cup of Twitter Dushin is, of course, the headline you will surely read in tomorrow morning's paper. Brian Brushwood damns Kevin Smith to eternal douchiness. For okay. Justin Robert Young, I bid you all good evening. Oh, I hate you so much, Justin Robert Young. Okay, and look, clear. Got... I thought that went well. I thought that went really well. <laughs> I love the way I love the way you act like like that's something that just happened to us. Like you didn't just do that. I'm glad, to me. You're I'm like, glad we're off the air. I'm, I'm glad, you know, that we can just talk about this now. But I thought that went really well. <laughs> that was you are such a jerk. All right, look, uh, can we talk about uh, I was really surprised change? by the way it turned out. Alan. Yeah, I'm pretty shocked. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I mean, that was a really, really, really big upset, Brian. I don't know why you wanted to push so hard for that. But I mean, I was, I was I following did. you. I was no, following look. you on the improv. Dude, uh, look, I figured out that I was too awesome at my Canadian accent and then tried to dial it back at the end and it didn't work out so hot. So I'm very upset about this. I did not, why he's not the most, I mean, granted he does get on and tweet like nonstop and cover up my feed for like two hours a day. But Kevin Smith's not the most annoying guy on Twitter. Not by a long shot. Big Ben? He was bogging. Big Big Ben, He's yeah. Bugging, bugging you know, I think, I think one of the problems with Big Ben is that uh, we got in at 3 a.m., uh, so there were only a couple bongs. Uh, you know, 12 o'clock would have pushed him right over the top. You know what? That's a yeah. good point. Had Big Ben advanced to the next round, he would have been a serious contender because the farther yeah. back you yeah. went, the more annoyingly long the bongs would have would have gonged. You know, I'll Can tell you what, really, uh, Cal Canis not going further was a big surprise for me. I thought he was. I thought he was a very, very strong contender. All right, can we can we talk about the name change? Because uh, as, as we... <laughs> oh, we need to give it more time than this, uh, but we'll talk about it. Well, let's just say, listen, we want to change the name to the show because if it's called NSFW and it has an explicit tag on, on iTunes, then we might as well just have ranked pornography, which we have decided not to after much deliberation included into the show. So, uh, yeah, we need a new name. So people yeah, will basically look, there, there are people who... There are people who write us saying, I would love to see the show, but it's blocked at work. And we are the only program that's blocked on all of Leo Laporte's network. And it's because, number one, we have an explicit tag, which we really haven't been explicit since we learned our lesson back with the Spill.com boys. And exactly. uh, we, we've been pretty much as for SFW for quite a while. So we got to come up with another, another name, something that reflects it a little bit better. Uh, what I want you guys to do, and this will be a big part of next week's episode, is send us your proposed title for uh, at nsfwshow at gmail.com, and we will figure out a game, and we will have, hopefully, not one that determines any of us actually, you know, trying to make accents will not determine the actual outcome. But uh, there is a name suggestion thread at the clubhouse at bbliveshow.info slash uh, forums. You can check there, but otherwise, you can hit us up at nsfwshow at gmail.com. Any suggestions? We got suggestions like Kook and the Racist Badger. We've got Kook Internet and, yeah. the Podcast. We've got the BB Live Show. We've got the Fapper Feed. We've got uh, I like, Internet I Tonight. I like Bob. I kind of like Not Not What's Safe Bob? for Work. Just, you know, it's a good name. Just Bob? Bob's your uncle? Yeah, Bob. <laughs> Uh, you know what's funny is I don't know if they were calling this the name of the podcast or they were just trying to give me a compliment, but one of the people in the chat room just wrote, awesome sauce, Brian. 
So I don't know. Maybe we should just call this show Awesome, awesome Sauce. Awesome is a pretty good name. Yeah. Awesome, but yeah, Cuba awesome is also bad. another. <laughs> uh, best worst show. Somebody says infected with Martin Sargent. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. Well, look, we'll, we'll deal with this later on. But uh, until then, is there anything you guys want to plug before we wrap things up? Uh, well, uh, tech let's news let's today go, on yeah we could just we you know tech news today on the twit network every day 2 30 p.m at uh, uh live.twit.tv or available on demand at uh, twit.tv slash tnt i don't do accents uh, i'm not really that funny <laughs> but you get a lot of tech news so there you go yeah by the yeah. way you haven't been on since since you launched tnt tom but uh, let me just say it is and, and I, I was a fan of uh the whatever that i can't remember the cnet show that you did uh but the uh, the tech news today, I love it. I love uh, Becky Worley and uh, Sarah Lane. Uh, you guys play off each other really, really well. And I will just say this, especially with Becky Worley on your show, a, a tech news show that uses the phrase, I talk to my sources, is just insane and mind-blowing and awesome. That they, There's original <laughs> reporting being done on, on it's a pretty tech lucky. podcast. Yeah, it's pretty lucky to have Becky in there like that. It's pretty pretty awesome. I, have to, I, yeah. I, I second that wholeheartedly. But, but you guys are doing a fantastic job, and it is a daily listen that uh, you guys uh, you guys should all get on on the wagon for. I highly Thanks, recommend man. it. Uh, real yeah, quick, we, guys. we do have a late entry on uh, name uh, The Internet Television Show, which would be abbreviated TITS. Uh, that's just, just putting that out there. <laughs> I don't know if that does anything for you guys. Uh, by the way, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Schwood, at S-H-W-O-O-D. And by the way, if you need an excuse to follow me on Twitter, I'm up in the Northeast right now. Uh, we're going to be doing a spontaneous meetup tomorrow night. We're hashing it out over Twitter. So if you follow me on Twitter, you'll get to follow those kinds of things. What about you, Justin? Uh, yeah, uh, the biggest thing is on YouTube. We have Weird Things TV. It is YouTube.com slash Weird Things uh, TV, please go check that out. And uh, at Justin R. Young on Twitter. Uh, I, also, uh, what's it called? On WeirdThings.com, Brett Roundsville, our friend on this show, is writing for us now, along with uh, a bunch of other people that you will really, really enjoy. So if you like ghosts and Bigfoot and crazy lasers and insane military inventions, go ahead and check out uh, WeirdThings.com. Awesome. All right, we'll see you guys. See you next Tuesday where we'll be back in studio and everything will be back to normal. Uh, sorry for all the shenanigans with being on the road for an entire month straight, but I love you guys very much. We'll see you next Tuesday. You might as well work on the accents now. Limb it up. Joined, as always, by Tomas Marie. Tomas, have you worked on your pompous accent? Well, I don't know if I have a pompous accent, really, Brian, but uh, I do have the kind of accents that would convey a bit of, of uh, sophistication, if you will. I'm afraid you'll have to sound more bored, as if you're watching some event that you're supposed to be making exciting, but can seem to be get up the courage to do so. I'm looking oh, for this. Oh, I see what you other. want, Brian. It's a bit of the bored, sophisticated commentator <laughs> voice. Thank you. Yes, yes. I, there's a reason you're on our A-team, dude. Yeah.